What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Saturday, November 16th, 2024, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now it is 1500 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from the Middle East and Europe. So Iran has issued a warning to airlines to avoid several major areas in Iran and what you're looking at here is a map showing these areas so you can see one area in the western part of Iran one area in the northeastern part of Iran and then another area in the east central part of Iran and another area in western Iran closer to Turkey so this is pretty interesting and last night we had a flurry of emergency action messages. In about 30 or 45 minutes, there were 20 emergency action messages broadcasted. These are nuclear attack options that go out to our nuclear forces. And I have a recording, and we were listening to this in the live stream last night. This was around 1 or 2 a.m. here in the eastern United States, or 0100. And that was at 0100 to 0200 Eastern Time. And at some point, there were actually two operators reading these emergency action messages simultaneously on the same frequency. I have some recordings I want to share with you guys. This is extremely rare, and it only happens when our nuclear forces are on high alert. They start broadcasting so many messages that they're actually talking over each other on the same frequencies. And this was just a few hours after three U.S. government VIP planes left D.C. yesterday evening and went to Doomsday Bunkers. Two went to NORAD and one went to Offutt Air Base. Okay, so something's brewing, guys. Also, we had a nuke sniffer plane and a presidential Doomsday plane fly to the Indian Ocean last night at the same time as these emergency action messages were being broadcasted so i don't know why the nuke sniffer went to the indian ocean i don't know if they're going to deploy it to iran to monitor iran's nuclear program to see if iran is doing nuclear tests there have been several suspicious earthquakes in iran over the last month and if you look at the seismographs, they look identical to the North Korean nuclear tests in that there's actually a very abrupt increase in that natural earthquakes. When you look at a seismograph, it's almost like a crescendo where there's a gradual increase in intensity and then a gradual decrease versus if you look at the seismograph of a nuclear test, there's a sudden increase, a sudden spike, actually two of them. The first spike representing the initial charge to compress the nuclear material. And then that causes the main charge to go off, the fusion reaction. So you can actually look at the seismographs of these Iranian earthquakes over the last month. And they look identical to the North Korean nuclear tests. And the mainstream media is not talking about it. But let me just play this for you. This is very, very concerning, guys. So you can hear a woman a little bit louder and then a man very quiet in the background. So they were trying to broadcast so many of these that they were talking over each other and here's another one. So there were two more there, and then we also had several long-range radars active at the same time last night as well. Here you can see three of them on the waterfall. So 
So this is some kind of a radar that was active at the same time. Here's a 4.2 magnitude earthquake that struck northeastern Iran last night, and it only had a depth of 10 kilometers. Could be another nuclear test. And what's interesting is the epicenter of this earthquake was just a few miles away from several IRGC bases you can see here actually there's also a transporter erector launcher battery in the Shahid Hashemi Air Base. So some kind of an air base over here and multiple IRGC bases and the epicenter of this quake very close to that. So maybe they were testing something out here. Who knows? And here's the nuke sniffer that went to the Indian Ocean and then it disappeared from the flight tracker. And here's the U.S. presidential doomsday plane that flew towards northern Australia, and then it disappeared from the flight tracker as well. Very, very unusual. I'm not aware of any appointments that either Biden or Lloyd Austin has in Australia, but I could be wrong. If anybody knows out there if Lloyd Austin or Biden are supposed to be going to Australia this weekend, please let me know. Otherwise, this is extremely unusual, guys. This is a presidential doomsday plane. The U.S. president can command the entire U.S. military, including the nuclear forces, from one of these planes. They're hardened to withstand EMPs, and they can order nuclear strikes from this plane, okay? And it's known as the NAOC, the National Airborne Operations Center. It's literally a flying bunker, for the president and the defense secretary okay and then here's adam 31 disappeared right near malaysia so i don't know what's going on over there we also had several f-15s of the qatar air force doing some kind of an elephant walk at the hamad international airport this was at the same time as all of those emergency action messages were being broadcasted here you can see six of them Okay, absolutely insane, very unusual, and the F-15s are nuclear capable. They can carry more nuclear bombs than any other fighter jet built by the U.S. They can carry up to five B-61 nuclear gravity bombs in comparison to the F-16 and the F-35, which can only carry one or two B-61s, okay? And here we have that video footage that was released by the U.S. Military Central Command showing these B-52s flying over the Middle East in an undisclosed location. And these B-52s are registered as part of our nuclear triad. So for those of you guys who are not aware, we have about 70 B-52s still operational. Out of those 70, 46 are officially registered as part of our nuclear triad and are configured to deliver air-launched cruise missiles, the AGM-86, which has a range of over 1,500 miles and carries the W-80 thermonuclear warhead, which has a yield of 150 kilotons. So there were some idiots in the comments saying that, oh yeah, every B-52 is nuclear capable, and that is a bunch of BS. That is not true, okay? There are only two-thirds of our B-52s are configured for nuclear use. The rest are for non-nuclear use, and these that you're looking at right here were taken from our nuclear triad, okay, out of the 46 that we have. They took six of them and moved them to Qatar, okay? That is a big move to do that, okay? To take away from our nuclear triad and redeploy is a huge deal. And a member of Iran's parliament on Saturday said Tehran must embrace atomic bombs to achieve regional balance. And an Iranian military spokesman accidentally confirmed that Iran has received Russia's S-400 missile defense systems. And the Trump team aims to bankrupt Iran with a new maximum pressure plan, according to the Financial Times. And Iran's foreign minister told State TV that no Iranian official met with Elon Musk dismissing the New York Times report about a meeting in New York as a quote-unquote fabricated scenario. 
And Iran's defense minister arrived in Damascus, Syria today for an emergency security meeting. And the Polish foreign ministry has announced crucial negotiations on the Russian-Ukrainian war in Warsaw. The meeting will include foreign ministers from France, Germany, Ukraine, and other EU leaders. So some critical meetings taking place in the coming days in Warsaw and Zelensky made a lot of interesting comments last night he said that he wants to end the war by diplomatic means next year he said talks are possible if Ukraine isn't alone with Russia and remains strong he also said Putin will not be allowed to negotiate surrender terms for Ukraine he said, I will only take negotiations with Trump seriously, not with his advisors. This is the level of presidents. Zelensky also emphasized that Trump said that he is on the side of Ukraine and wants to end the war. Okay, so interesting comments there from Zelensky. He also said that the situation in eastern Ukraine is very difficult. He said that Ukraine can't throw brigades like cannon fodder towards the front lines he said that there is a slow advance of the russian army for various reasons he said the replenishment and equipment of the brigades was slow he said ukraine had to wait for the delivery of some weapons for 12 months he said half of the promised weapons from the u.s have not yet reached ukraine he said in the eastern part of ukraine there's exhausted brigades and rotation is necessary he said the guys get tired we have to replace them with fresh armed units first of all people then land okay so he's saying that he's more concerned about the soldiers than the land and he also confirmed that ukraine is now testing four different types of domestically produced ballistic missiles wow and just a couple of days ago a ukrainian think tank delivered a report to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense stating that Ukraine could develop nuclear warheads within just a few months if necessary okay so this is very very serious maybe Ukraine is thinking about producing their own version of an ice scander system and they can arm it with tactical nuclear warheads and the British defense contractor BAE systems will open a new factory for the production of M777 howitzers to strengthen the support for Ukraine. And five European countries have decided to jointly procure 1,000 PAC-2 Gem-T missiles for the Patriot Missile Defense System. The missiles will be worth $5.5 billion and will be built in Germany. The five countries are Sweden, Germany, Spain, the Netherlands, and Romania. And I'm guessing these Patriot missiles are strictly for those countries, not for Ukraine. I think it's just for those five countries. But the fact that they're going to be producing a thousand of them, that is absolutely insane. They're obviously preparing for war. And in a large-scale overnight assault, Ukrainian air defense forces intercepted and destroyed 53 out of 83 Russian drones and North Korea has sent at least 50 self-propelled artillery systems and 20 modernized multiple launch rocket systems to Russia, according to Ukrainian intelligence. And the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Ukraine ordered tens of thousands of AI-powered attack drones. The drones feature the Skynode system by U.S. company Autirion, which uses artificial intelligence for computer vision. Skynode, a mini computer and flight controller, is integrated into drones produced by Ukrainian companies. The technology bypasses electronic warfare interference, enables swarm control, and supports fully autonomous flight. Ukraine is set to receive tens of thousands of Skynode units with deployment on the battlefield expected early next year. Additionally, drones with fiber optic guidance are already in use and offer further protection against electronic warfare. Other companies are also developing similar systems for Ukraine's defense. So this is crazy, guys. Okay, an AI-controlled drone swarm 
That is absolutely crazy. This is like something from a 90s sci-fi movie. And North Korea appears to be jamming GPS signals in a wider area along its border with South Korea, a military official said on Saturday. North Korea has attempted to jam GPS signals for the eighth consecutive day from November 8th to November 15th, the official said. The jamming attacks were initially conducted within the Northwest Islands, but have expanded to the Gyeonggi and Northern Gangwon provinces since Thursday, according to the official. So North Korea is now expanding the area of jamming along the border with South Korea. That is definitely not a good sign. And in the Republic of Abkhazia, which used to be part of Georgia, it was stolen by Russia, it was occupied by Russia in 2008, is facing a potential coup with the pro-Russian president having fled potentially to Sochi and is now nowhere to be found. The opposition leader was spotted in the capital today and there was some kind of a controversial investment deal with Russia that sparked this coup and the demonstrators demanded that the government scrapped the investment agreement, which critics feared would clear the way for wealthy Russians and Russian business owners to buy up property in the lush Black Sea region, pricing out the locals. The demonstrations since have grown into anti-government protests, aiming to force the current administration to step down. On Friday, the protesters rammed the gates of the parliament building in Sukhum, the Abkhazian capital, in response to which tear gas was fired by police. So very, very concerning situation there. We're hearing that the opposition is occupying government buildings in the capital. Local telegram channels report that they have established a headquarters to maintain key government services in the president's absence. They are currently meeting with the locals in the building of the presidential administration and called for citizens to gather in the main hall. Reportedly, the opposition has seized weapons from police armories. Military units are reinforcing security around weapons depots. And the president of Abkhazia is refusing to step down and we're hearing that he has already asked Russia for military assistance. And this morning, the Russian Gazprom stopped gas supplies to Austria. And we have some video footage of a U.S. Navy WASP-class amphibious assault ship, the USS Boxer, departing Pearl Harbor yesterday. On the deck were visible MV-22 Ospreys, MH-60 Seahawks, and 5th generation F-35B Lightning II fighter jets. And Norwegian fishermen caught a U.S. nuclear submarine in their nets. The Norwegian fishermen caught the USS Virginia, a 115-meter-long nuclear-powered attack sub, while fishing off the coast of Tromsø, Norway. The submarine dragged their nets for about two nautical miles. Then it was cut off. At the time of the incident, the fishermen thought they were catching halibut. The U.S. Navy said the incident is under investigation and a compensation process has been initiated. And here we have some more strategic aerial refuelers going down towards the Middle East. This afternoon, they departed from Mildenhall in the U.K. And here we have a U.S. reconnaissance plane that was patrolling the Gulf of Aden near Yemen. That's pretty unusual and could mean that the U.S. is going to launch some strikes on Yemen soon. And then we had this U.S. Air Force C-5 Galaxy fly up to Lulia in northern Sweden. Now this town in northern Sweden, Lulia, is where several B-1 strategic bombers landed a few months ago. And now a C-5 goes up there, so it's possible that we now have a new bomber base in northern Sweden. And this is super close to Russia's northern fleet base in Murmansk in the Kola Peninsula. Okay, those bombers could be there within minutes. Okay, so this is a very strategic location for the U.S. to put bombers here we have a picture of a new HIMARS that's under development in the U.S. that can basically launch double 
the number of missiles as the traditional HIMARS, and it runs on a five-axle chassis versus the original HIMARS has a three-axle chassis, so ten wheels instead of six, and basically another launching pod, as you can see here. This is absolutely insane. What a beast. And then here we have video footage coming out of China showing their new HQ-19 missile defense system. And this missile defense system is basically a copy of the U.S. THAAD missile defense system. So it's used for intercepting ballistic missiles, medium-range ballistic missiles. And here we have a video of the Austrian president basically defying Putin. Let me play this for you. He says, we will not be blackmailed by anyone, not even by the Russian president. We will not be brought to our knees by Putin's government, by Putin himself. And for this very reason, we have taken precautions to ensure that we can defend ourselves, defend our democracy, defend the promise of freedom, democracy, and the rule of law. So strong words there from the Austrian president after Putin cuts off gas supplies to Austria. Here we have some video footage coming out of Estonia showing a bridge that was detonated on the 13th of this month. And the reason why it was detonated was it wasn't capable of supporting heavy military vehicles such as the M1 Abrams tanks which NATO would use to reinforce Estonia in the event of an invasion. So they had to detonate this bridge, and they're going to rebuild it and make it stronger so it can support more weight, the weight of multiple tanks crossing over it. So this is another big sign that NATO is preparing for war with Russia, and the Baltics are scrambling to build up their defenses because it looks like Russia is getting ready to invade any day now. And here we have a typhoon heading towards the Philippines. This is Typhoon Papito, and it's currently packing winds of 120 miles per hour, and it's going to make a direct landfall on the Philippines. Here we have some video footage of these massive waves slamming into the shore of the Philippines. Check this video out. Absolutely crazy. Look at the size of that wave. Look at that. That is absolutely insane. Solid. Massive waves there. And here we have video footage of this WASP class amphibious assault ship leaving Pearl Harbor. We don't know where it's going, but you can see all these Ospreys here and F-35s, absolutely insane. I wonder where it's going. And also here you can see the F-35s. If I can scroll forward a little bit, you can see some of the F-35s there in the back. You can see their, their tail wings right there. So this is a lot of equipment, guys. F-35s. Ospreys, Sikorsky Seahawks. It's a lot of capability here. Okay, this is no joke. And where they're going, I have no idea, but they just departed from Pearl Harbor. And then this radio station in the Midwest called 100.9 The Eagle, the Tri State's classic rock station, did a story about my video last night. But that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I might be back later on tonight with another update. 
If not, I'll be in the 24-7 live stream. If anything crazy happens, I will go live and update you guys live. That's what I did last night when those EAMs were transmitting. I went live even at 2 a.m. because things were getting really intense. But just make sure you guys are getting prepared. Make sure you have your bug out bag. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan. And check out my Telegram and Twitter. The links are in the description below this video. I post all my updates over there. So if you follow me over there, you'll never miss an update because sometimes YouTube doesn't send out notifications. So don't rely on the notifications. And also consider joining my Patreon. I post all my updates to Patreon first. And you can also directly message me on Patreon. So the link to my Patreon is in the description below this video. And until the next time, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.